I was in project management in the multifamily uh, residential construction industry and there was a large multifamily development that I was working at and I was just watching and they had these 20 yard bins lined up outside the buildings as they're being constructed and there's like six or seven, I took the photo. They were just all overflowing with polystyrene foam. And I was like, it's got a recycle symbol on it. There's gotta be a way to make this work. There was so little activity or interest or awareness about it, it was almost like one of those things, it's just a problem, it always has been and it always will be and there's not really anything anybody can do. And I was just like, well, if no one's gonna do anything, then I guess I'll have to do it. <laughs> Polystyrene, uh, sometimes referred to by its technical name, expanded polystyrene foam. Most people refer to by the brand name Styrofoam. You don't say, can I have a facial tissue? Everybody says Kleenex, which is a brand name. But to the vast majority of the population, if you say polystyrene foam, they, they okay, whatever, Styrofoam, oh yeah, no, I know what that is. Most people recognize polystyrene as the white packing foam around appliances or electronics or takeout containers and styrofoam cups, see, styrofoam, <laughs> polystyrene cups. But it's actually a far more widely used material. Polystyrene is probably the single greatest unrecognized pollution problem of our generation. Just how much is being generated and put into the landfill, <laughs> it's a truly eye-opening, keep you awake at night number. And so that's where we realized this is a significantly bigger scale issue than, and, and yet when you talk to people, even people who are in the environmental industry, and they just have absolutely no idea that it's, it is such a large scale problem. The challenge was simply that the regular recycle industry is what's called the hub and spoke method. You have a central location where all the industrial machinery is, and you have trucks that go out, collect the material, and bring it back. That works fantastic for the industry, except for polystyrene, because everything in the recycle industry, the, re the retained value and the recycled value is based on weight, and polystyrene has this wonderful, fantastic quality that it was designed to do, where there's no weight. So you could have a huge truckload, and you'll spend $500 to transport $50 of material. So the answer was obvious that if you can't you know, bring the material to the factory, then you have to bring the factory to the material. So we show up, we take the material, it goes into the machine in the back of the truck. Um, it is what's called densified. So that means it's applied significant heat and pressure. Um, most people recognize that polystyrene foam is very light. Uh, it's usually about a half pound per cubic foot. And after it comes out of the machine, it's 60 or 65 pounds per cubic foot. So it comes out as a paste, we form it into bricks where it cools very quickly, and then we just put it on a pallet where it is you know, shrink-wrapped, locked to the wall, and when we return back to the warehouse, it just unloaded at the warehouse. So it's a very efficient system. Polystyrene can be recycled into uh, mainly moldings, so picture frames, uh, countertop accent pieces, tiles, backsplash, crown moldings, baseboards. It has all these wonderful properties that make it applicable to these kind of uses and they can make it look like anything, like marble, bird's eye maple, brushed nickel. Uh, they can make it look like anything. It's truly astonishing. People want this kind of a service. They certainly, you know, we've set up numerous places, um, even more recently like Leduc, and the uptake and buy-in from residents has been immediate and significant. OS Appliance, of course we sell major appliances. We specialize in open box or scratch and dent appliances. When we get our trailer full of our out of box or scratch and dent appliances, we get a lot of packaging with it. And of course in that packaging there's a lot of styrofoam. Styrofoam is very hard to deal with, very costly to deal with. And while I was searching out and finding, you know, really not a lot of help with this, Robert from Styrogo just happened to drop in on me. Every month they come to dispose of our styrofoam properly. You have a company like Styrogo that comes and takes care of it, takes the worries right out of your hands. Next for Styrogo, uh, I guess on the local level, would certainly be here in Western Canada to work with the larger municipalities. We are certainly looking to pursue and engage with um, uh, Eastern Canada in Ontario and Quebec and there is significant interest in our system south of the border. So it's, it's a movement whose time has come and it will happen. 
and that will displace a huge amount of material from landfill and other waste streams and force it back into a closed loop recycling program.